but the whole session we saw the different uh, elements of revelation revelation as taking place in the life of the people revelation as taking place through history and but then this history of revelation taking place through events came to be understood later on in the course of his, history as revelation of truths revelation taking place in history actually was not revelation of god in terms of truths revelation of god as person who is interested in his people so personal relationship was the matter of revelation and revelation was self revelation of god self gift of god but that came to be understood as revelation of truths very far away from the biblical idea but it happened in the course of time because of the cultural contact with the non christian cultures of the time the, the greeks and so on so many reasons and uh, none of the fathers we spoke of they were none of them was talking about uh, revelation in itself they were talking about some other things in the course of that the mention was made about revelation and so when we look at the history of the development of the concept of revelation it will be uh, not quite just to attribute wrong ideas to the fathers because they were not speaking about revelation uh, in itself but on something else and in which they made reference that's all so the ideas which they came to speak uh, in course of their other interest may not be exactly the same as uh, it should be so there is a weakness of uh, turning revelation into a matter of revealing of truths though it has appeared in the life in the teaching of all the different uh, fathers we cannot find blame on um, in this matter it has taken place like that and in second vatican council we have come to realize that uh, faithfulness to the bible requires a study of it in the background of the original situation in the context of the original uh, life original con culture and as a result of that we have now come to the understanding again that revelation is an event between people and god and not a matter of intellectual communication of truths uh, in the process the process of that we have been discussing the understanding of vatican 2 vatican 2 is the important point this called it may be a watershed in the history of theology so from that point of from the point of view of the watershed watershed means that from that point of view from that time onwards the things are different things are more faithful to the bible and in the course of that we saw that personal communication is not to be identified with the truth but at the same time as we close the last session we said that truth also can be spoken of if it is not in the understood in the intellectual sense truth can be understood in a practical sense and the practical sense of truth will collaborate will uh, uh, go along with the biblical experience of the jewish people the exodus event there they were let us say moving from slavery to freedom some event was taking place they were not uh, speaking of intellectual ideas this event can be thought of as search for truth if truth is understood in the practical sense you follow this is also something which we see in gandhi one of the great figures of human history is gandhi and he wrote his whole life under the heading of experiments with the truth so what was the truth there it was not intellectual idea his experiment was truth started in south africa that was struggling with the british people for the greater 
uh, benefits of life for the people there, the Indian indentured laborers, their life situation has to be made better. That is experiment with the truth. Then he comes to India, the experiment with the truth continues. That is involvement in the freedom struggle. Then all the different problems, issues, uh, and all that connected with that. All that is experiment with the truth. So their truth is not spoken of in terms of intellectual understanding. That is very clear. Truth is something different. It is something connected with the, uh, the biblical understanding of truth. So the idea that we have in uh, St. John, I am the truth, Jesus saying, I am the truth, I wear the truth and the life. The truth there has got some uh, similarity with the truth which Gandhi speaks of. Truth that I am experimenting with. Truth I am trying to uh, achieve. And the truth for him is not simply easily achievable by making um, uh, two realities uh, corresponding to each other. But it is something to be achieved by struggling for the realization of a better society. Gandhi, for Gandhi, truth is precisely that. And so we have to keep this in mind. I, I would like to give very uh, strong importance to this idea of truth as practical and uh, the need to turn for us to turn to this idea of truth, which a non-Christian Gandhi could do, which we have not yet become capable of doing. That speaks very not very uh, well of our way of understanding and our way of preaching the Bible. Um, so truth can be spoken of in, the, uh, in, in parallel with search for a better society. The slavish society of the Jews and that under, under the Egyptians, the society of the free men in Canaan with the milk and honey, so satisfy, satisfaction of life. Uh, so this is truth. The earlier idea of truth, I am taking this idea from St. Thomas, St. Thomas Aquinas. The, the earlier idea of truth, as he used to express in Latin, it will be nice for you to remember a Latin expression, not that you should learn it now. You will be learning Latin and then you will be able to understand the meaning of that. These Latin expressions are always a big help for you, will be a big help for you, because these expressions will come in ordinary discussions. So, uh, truth in the intellectual sense is adequatio. Uh, adequatio rei et voluntatem. Adequatio means adequation. Adequation means correspondence. Adequatio rei, rei means things. Correspondence of things with, uh, oh, in, sorry. With the intellect, not with all of that, I made a mistake. Uh, intellectual truth. Truth as practical. Let me just make sure that I don't make a mistake. Adequatio rei hominis. Ad intellectum et voluntatem dei.
Okay, this is intellect two by three. Same thing, I just changed the order of the things. Here, are the cause you ray. Ray means of things. Hominis, you know the meaning, human. So, adequation of human things or human realities to, ad means to, intellectum et voluntatem dei, to the intellect and will of God. This is a nice expression. Adequatio is the foundation of, or, or understand, the common in the understanding of truth. Truth is adequatio. Truth is correspondence. Truth is adequation. Adequation between what? Between a thing outside and the intellect is intellectual truth. The thing outside and the intellect and will of God, that is practical. Don't worry about uh, uh, copying it now. I'll give you the material. You will have it there. No, don't worry. So this is uh, one way we can speak of revelation of Truth, revelation of truth. Actually, uh, we should not speak of revelation of truth. We should speak of revelation of uh, revelation of the personal person, revelation of God's will, revelation of the uh, yeah self, uh, revelation of God's will or God's self. Revelation of truth is reduction of the true whole reality. Be reduced to something. But if you want, you can speak of revelation of truth in this sense, practical sense. But then let us not follow this uh, understanding of truth because the people are not going to understand this meaning of truth. They understand always the intellectual understanding of truth. So keep avoid that. Then we have the story of creation. Revelation as the divine offer of salvation. Vatican II document, there is a continued narration and there is a story of creation. Story of creation is a, an etiological narrative composed on the basis of the experience of God's revelation and salvation. What do you mean? The story of creation is the etiological story, etiological narrative based on experience of revelation and salvation. So what is the experience that people have? Experience of revelation and salvation. God brought them to the experience of salvation and revelation. That is a great thing for the slave people who have now come to acquire dignity as human beings and self-respect as human beings. And then it makes a big difference. So their whole thinking is, in terms of God as someone who has brought us to this state. The one who has brought us to this state and changed our life, he must be also the cause of all that is there. So the, he must be the creator. So from this personal experience of salvation, from the experience of revelation in personalistic sense, they went back to the story of the origin of things. So the first experience for the people is the experience of salvation. In the background of that, they think of creation. It is not as it is generally, logically said, the first creation of the world, then creation of the people, then people becoming slaves, then slaves being redeemed from slavery. To this. That is not the way it has happened with the Israelite people. For what ha their first God experience is experience of the Exodus. People who are living like anybody else in that, uh, you know, in, in the old world, let us say, 10,000 years ago, or maybe 12,000 years ago, I don't know, some, any, around that time, people who are all, <clears throat> the, the whole evolution had uh, brought human, hum, human beings on the earth, and human beings were thinking with their reflection, reflect, power of reflection and intellect, intellect and so on. And then they experienced the first, for the first time, liberation. They had a long history where they became the slaves of the Egyptians. So all that went on, but then the experience of God, they feel 
as conscious experience is when God intervenes in saving them. God's self-revelation as the saviour, someone who is concerned with them and so on and so on. That is the first experience. Then they think back on the event of uh, origin of the world. So in the Bible we have first day Genesis, then the story of this thing, uh, salvation. But what actually took place is, in the consciousness of the people, the first event for the Israelites is experience of revelation, experience of God as saving. And this God, they think, must be the God of creation, must be the one who created the world. So that is the way logic worked. You will learn more about it when you do um, uh, study about the Old Testament, Old Testament. And when this portion comes, he will explain to you, fathers will explain to you. Now this whole story, therefore, is not a kind of report. The story of creation is an etiological story. What is an etiological story? Etiology means the science of searching for the cause of things. For example, if you have got a sickness, what is the cause of the sickness? Etiology. That portion is called etiological inquiry or the etiology of the sickness is supposing you have got uh, fever the etiology will show that you have been in the water or you have been uh, uh, careless about uh, these things and therefore you got the fever that is etiology so the assigning of a cause to something that is etiology and this takes place not only in the case of this uh, medicinal research of medicine in literature, assignment of a cause of the particular name of a place. Why the place is called like this? The reason is this. So the reason for the naming of the place is attributed to a particular event. It is a made up event, imaginative. Sometimes it is in the terms of mythology. Uh, there is a very good event uh, to, uh, for those who know Telugu. The, Watluru is nearby place here, no? Why Watluru got the name Watluru? There is an etiological story behind it. Uh, anthropological researches, they have made it clear. The story is about from, uh, from Ramayana. So, Ravana was carrying Sita in his uh, plane and uh, Jatayu, uh, Rama's people, wanted to fight and stop it, so they were flying, Jedayu was flying and uh, Ravana from the plane cut them, hit them and then one part of the body of uh, uh, Jedayu fell down, that is Vata, you know what Vata is? Vata fell down there, <laughs> that is why it is called Vatluru. <laughs> Vata stands for I think uh, what is it? What la? What la? Testicle. So that is the story. <laughs> this is an etiological story. Nobody thinks it happened like that. Same way the creation narrative is an etiological story. But some of our people don't think it in those terms. It is simply written in the Bible. Bible everything is true and therefore it has happened just sadly like that. This is an etiological story. We should be able to grant that. Bible is not a paper report. I said it is something like poetry. We don't uh, understand everything literally. So in the etiological story, just like in the case of uh, Watluru, thing, we know it, is not, it has not happened. But the story is there. So story has got in that way uh, relation with uh, events which we want to connect with. So in the same way, the Israelites wanted to connect the origin with a um, great power and therefore, they connected the origin of the world with God. So the whole story of creation is in this way, an etiological story. And in making this, as you will learn when you do Pentateuch, uh, not only the Israelites had made this kind of etiological story, other people, other cultures also had made this kind of stories. So there were so many stories available in the uh, Middle East, uh, Babylon in that area where the Israelites also were living. So they actually took a story from there and modified it. So they did not make the whole story by themselves, <laughs> modified the story. So that is it. Anyway, uh, the creation idea is to be understood as 
first act of salvation what is important for the jews is salvation the first act of salvation is creation so the biblical story of revelation is not a historical statement nor a paper report it is a theological statement so theologically what they are saying is this god is the creator of the world theology it is theological statement you understand the difference it is not a journalistic statement it is not a paper report but theology the theological statement means i understand god as the one who brings salvation through creation so it is a theological statement it is about the theology that is being expressed there not history in the statement then second and third we are referring to the document of vatican 2 the verbum in that uh, second number we just now explained then the second and uh, number 3 God creates and conserves all things through his word. In the created order he offers to human kind a lasting testimony to himself, so creation. Further in his plan to open up the way to divine salvation, he made himself known to our first parents from the very beginning, so self revelation. He made himself known. After their fall, he aroused them to hope for salvation. by the promise of redemption and he has constantly kept the human race in his care so as to grant eternal life to all those who persevere in doing good in search of salvation so in the course of this uh, he called abraham in order to make him great make him a great nation after the era of patriarchs he taught this nation through moses and prophets to acknowledge him as the only living and true god the all caring father and the just judge and so on so in the next number and the third third uh, the second and third sentence exactly of number 3 speaks about the universal salvific will of god god wanted to save open the way for the whole humanity the way to salvation so it speaks of universal will of salvation universal will of salvation is or salvific will of uh, sorry universal will of salvi un, sorry universal salvific will salvific will means the will to save god's will is to save it is universal salvific will so who are to be saved the whole universe so it is universal salvific will so let us get out of the understanding that god wants to save one particular people and he chose them israel we chose them for saving then afterwards he chose catholics and we will go to heaven others will not go god's plan of salvation is universal the whole universe is to be saved so god is the uh, open to, god offers cre- uh, to human kind a lasting testimony to himself and his plan opens up a uh, heavenly salvation so that is vatican to understanding of revelation this idea was not emphasized in the old the conventional context that we have we are able to emphasize this only because of the background of our intensive study of the bible then in this universe we love salvation there is a special history of salvation the call of abraham we just now read the call of abraham and the subsequent election of israel Uh, by this the council fathers see a divine in this council fathers see a divine pedagogy pedagogy means way of teaching method of teaching so in the whole of uh, the people one group of people the israel is selected or elected here israel selection is not to save them alone but it is selected for a purpose elected as a pedagogy method of teaching method of teaching the whole world about god's will of salvation and method of realizing salvation in the whole world through israel god's will was that the world should be should be saved through israel and when the israelites refused to collaborate with god we became 
the second israel so we are not specially elected people to enjoy salvation we are people who have to bring about the experience of salvation for the whole world you see so election is with the purpose of universal salvation this is not a catholics who are going to be saved that idea is spread by some groups that is not correct so here a segment of universal history is taken out as a special history of god's salvific intervention so special history throughout this history of the chosen people the universal call to salvation is preserved in so far as israel will be a sign to the nations isaiah 11:10 israel is a sign to the nations so israel is not for itself it is for the benefit of the nations sign to the nations then uh, in uh, in um, number 4 the document speaks of self disclosure of god in christ after god had spoken in many and various ways by the prophets in the last days he has spoken to us by a son he sent his son the eternal word to enlighten all human kind to enlighten all human kind to live among them and to tell them about the inner life of god thus it is that jesus christ the word made flesh sent as a human being among humans speaks the word of god and accomplishes the work of salvation which the father gave him to do to see jesus is to see the father also this is why jesus completes the work of revelation and confirms it by divine testimony he did this by the total reality of his presence and self manifestation by his words and works his symbolic acts and miracles and above all his death and resurrection the glorious resurrection from the dead crowned by his sending of the spirit of truth this message is that god is with us to deliver us from darkness of sin and death and to raise us up to eternal life beautiful presentation of the idea of the plan of god jesus is revelation christ is so at the end of all this christ is sent by god as self manifestation the second person of god second person of god is exactly equal to the first person the father and the holy spirit so the from the divine reality the divine comes to the humans so he is expressing himself he is showing himself god is showing himself by sending down the second person into the world so through jesus christ god is revealing himself so it is no intellectual thing god is revealing himself but this has got an intellectual dimension for those who are agree uh, those who believe those who have got faith the intellectual truth here is that god sent his son that god sent his son. so it's a proposition right god sent his son but god sending his son why did he send his son not to create an object of faith not to create a propositional revelation but to save the world that is the purpose self revelation and uh, uh, the vatican document in this way as i read it talks about christ here in the yohannine thought and language of category language categories that is from above to below from god to humans from the earth, heaven to the earth a descending christology descending means coming down so coming down from heaven so christology can be descending christology that is understanding of christ in terms of god coming down to humanity then we can speak of ascending christology so ascending christology we go to the first man jesus in the bible and we study and then we know and then finally the mystery of salvation being accomplished by jesus and salvation is being re- given and jesus is uh, uh, raised, risen to heaven so from the bottom we go up that is ascending christology so do in two ways we can understand the mystery of christ so in vatican to here in this document 
descending christology is taken here christ is presented as the way to the father the mediator the son logos light so this is uh, what has happened with regard to the mission of the son then what about jesus jesus has come down the revelation of god is taking place in the coming down of jesus and christ mere not merely speaks about the father but he is god speaking god revealing himself christ is god himself the word of god who became one among us a word means a word is the expression of the person so when i talk my words are my self expression so christ is the word of the father christ is the expression of the father self expression of the father christ is the final word of the father there is nothing more to say after that the final word is said because in him the dialogue between god and the humans reached its goal and culmination mainly namely communion